Hello NBA fans and welcome to my NBA Power Rankings for week number four. My name is Ace and before we break it down, quick reminder, Power Rankings, it's ranking teams from 1 to 30. Someone's going to be offended. I'm sorry if it's you. It's just how it goes with a Power Ranking. Anyways, let's just get right into it. I'm going to make this one a bit quicker than I usually do. Power Rankings for week number four. Lakers stick at number one, number five offensive, number three defensive rating through three weeks. They won it all last year, and they didn't get worse. Not much to talk about here. They're the number one team in the league. Bucks, same thing. They're hitting threes, and I really like that defensive lineup. You know, that starting lineup, DiVincenzo, Holiday, Antetokounmpo, Lopez, and Middleton. Dropping on screens, I don't know. Are they going to get punished for it, or are they going to get roasted? Time will tell. I think it, it's it's a good bet to make that they're not going to be hitting those shots off of the screen. If you're going to have a fatal flaw, it's not one of the worst ones to have. And they're betting on it, you know, not turning dividends for their opponents. And they have the number one offensive rating and number one net rating to start the season. So they've been playing very well. Clippers at three. Marcus Moore's back. I just don't know about this team. Blowing the lead to the Warriors, massive loss to the Mavericks. There are some signs that this team's not going to be doing well in the postseason. And I'm definitely with the doubters here. They do need some more time, though. And I'm not going to totally write them off now. I mean, I'm ranking them number three. But, yeah, I think... I, ne- I really need some time before I can make it a definitive opinion about this team. Um, actually, before I start talking about the Suns, if you like the Suns, maybe click subscribe and maybe... Anyone else, click subscribe, really helps out the channel if you stuck around until now. Suns, when they aren't hitting shots, they're not winning. And I said which could be proven wrong, which is what I wrote at halftime of the Wizards game tonight. I know a lot of games have happened tonight already. These are, this is already finished by Sunday night. So yeah, (laughs) this is not based on what, what has happened. But yeah, if they're not hitting shots, they're not winning. And it's been pretty clear that's what happened against the Pistons. That's what happened against the Clippers. That's what happened against the Wizards last night. Or tonight, actually. And they have four losses on the season, three of which was is completely attributed to their three-point shooting. They need to clean up their offense when they're not hitting threes, you know? I feel like they've become over-reliant on hitting threes. They have the number four offensive, number six defensive rating coming into this Wizards game. And they also have a number three net rating. Those advanced stats just look really good. So, I mean, not technically advanced stats, but you get the point. Sixers at five. I just like the Suns better, if you ask me. But honestly, two of their losses, their 7-3 record, can be attributed to Joel Embiid load management. They've played very well, and I feel like they could play even better. I don't know. You know, I, I just don't know if the Sixers team... I feel like it's not time to overreact and call them a top three team in the league. I think it's time to let's just wait and see what happens because they do have some stuff going on with um, quarantining, that sort of thing, and and contact tracing. We'll see what that turns into. But yeah, I mean, Ben Simmons, Joel Embiid still around. They're going to be a pretty good team still. I don't know what's going to happen with them. I think, I think just more time before I can make a true judgment on them and call them a top three team in the league. More consistency, more of this offense can actually function consistently. Celtics at six. Seems like they're going to be postponing all their games until Jason Tatum and Kemba Walker are back. And they do have the top record in the East, which is something I really didn't realize. But yeah, they have gone to that top rep- record even without Kemba Walker. And yeah, all signs are pointing towards being better. I moved them up seven spots in this week's ranking. And yeah, you can expect this team to be moving up if they are playing well, if they do get those guys back. Nets at seven, they're an extremely talented team, but they just can't find any consistency. They can't figure out what their rotations are. And I mean, I, I know they are five and six. They are They have a losing record, but something seriously bad really needs to happen before I can drop them much lower than six or seven. If you have Kyrie, if you have KD, actually, I know Kyrie's been out for a few games for personal reasons, that sort of thing, but 
Yeah, I mean, if you have those players, you can't bet against them. Those players are going to be good, and the team's still going to win games. Pacers at eight. Aaron Holiday isn't TJ Warren. He really needs to find his rhythm. I think he's an extremely talented player. Coming out of college, I said that guy's going to be good. He hasn't been that guy I thought he would be. I think he's shown it at times, but... I mean, it's clear that he has the talent. He just can't figure it out with this starting lineup that they're running. And Sabonis and Brogdon are balling out, and this team's going to be playing pretty well. And, yeah, that's it for the Pacers. The Jazz team's been playing well. Same thing, but Bojan Bogdanovic, same thing. A starter not stepping up. And that offense is still prone to collapsing at times, which is something that they just desperately need to fix. This team just goes dry. They can't hit anything sometimes. And I don't know. What's the method to fixing it? I mean, Quinn Snyder is a pretty good defensive coach, but do you question his offensive abilities as a coach? Maybe your option is bringing in a new guy, a new, a something, <laughs> a something to get scoring on this team. I don't know. Something needs to change. Trailblazers at 10. McCollum has been ridiculous, and everyone else, he's giving time to everyone else to find their rhythm, and that guy Yusuf Nurkic really needs to step up. I mean, we were calling him a verge all-star before the injury. That's how well he is playing. He needs to really figure it out, and he's got a really great core of players around him. All of these guys are in a great position to succeed. Just give them some time. I feel like this team can figure it out. He at 11, they just can't figure it out in terms of what's that rotation and what's that starting lineup. And they just haven't been consistent. They're not consistent. That's an error. And I'll just keep them around here for the time being because we know this team can be successful and we know they have a lot of talented players. They just can't really figure out what they're doing here. Warriors jump from 20 to 12. Steph Curry is Steph Curry. Wiggins kind of stepping up, not too much though. And Eric Pascal has been playing pretty well off the bench. But come on, I really hope that Steph Curry doesn't break his back with how hard he's carrying this team. I mean, I, he can definitely carry this team. This is what I said coming into the season. I started to express doubts. I started overreacting to the fact that Curry didn't have a, hearts, uh, a hot stop, a hot start coming off of a, a big wrist injury. Yeah, okay, maybe we shouldn't have been surprised that he didn't start well. That's a wrist injury. The player who's ball handling and shooting the ball a lot is going to need to adjust. And once he has, he's really been playing well. Mavericks at 13. Porzingis is back officially, but this team's got game. their games canceled. That's what the gray means. And they got two guys tested positive so they got a lot of guys in contact racing but I mean Porzingis is back right and this team should be only getting better but offense really needs to figure it out still I don't know another team where I'm just like give them time before giving passing judgment on this team Nuggets at 14 number two offensive and number 25 defensive rating same thing I said last week we know what their strength is. We know what their weakness is. And Gary Harris has been... <laughs> he's been so terrible. It, it's kind of ridiculous. I, I just don't understand this. He, he did have a good game, I believe. I think a night or two ago. But yeah, this, this is just... He's having his worst season on both offense and defense of his career. And, you know, you kind of have to wonder... Isn't Nikola Jokic a top five defensive player in the league? Like, <laughs> how much can you blame on a team being bad defensively? You literally have a top five defensive player in the league right now in terms of advanced stats. And Nikola Jokic, who's in your starting lineup alongside Gary Harris. And you're still seeing Gary Harris have worse defensive stats than he's ever had during his career. Yeah. Yeah, they need to move on from Gary Harris. Cavs at 15, maybe they're a bit too high. Fact of the matter is they're 5-5 five and five after significant, si significant injuries to pretty much everyone outside of Larry Nance and Andre Drummond. Too. 
actually are their two defensive anchors this season, I'd say. Isaac Okoro has played five games, and Darius Garland's played six games. Colin Sexton's played eight games. Kevin Porter has played zero games. Kevin Love has played two games. They have Dante Exum out as well, for what it's worth. <laughs> they don't even have a point guard at this point. And they're still 5-5, five and five, and they're still the number one defense in the NBA via defensive rating. J.B. Bickerstaff is a genius. <laughs> like, he's doing this with... He's doing this with a team that's been... Should not be here. They should not be at 5-5. Five and five. I mean, I am saying this about a 5-5 five and five team, but he's got the number one defense without totally ruining this team's pace. And you can argue all you want about their schedule being weak. That's just still a really good thing to see out of this Cavs team, considering they weren't supposed to do well this season. Hawks at 16, they lost their last three games, and Bogdanovich goes down for the season. And all their new offseason acquisitions have been injured, which is something that KOT4Q brought up. That's why I'm just repeating it right here. Bogdanovich, Gallinari, Dunn, Rondo, Kongwu all out. And this team, yeah, is going to suffer as a result. It's pretty clear. Pelicans at 17. 30th in the NBA in three-point percentage ex exposes their Achilles heel. This is a question of if the opposing team is going to game plan against this Pelicans team shooting the three. And if they are game planning against Pelicans shooting the three, then you need 30 out of Ingram, 30 out of Zion, and then you need 20 out of Ball or Bledsoe for them to have any chance of winning a game. That's just the reality of this team. And it sucks. And they're not going to be up here for much longer. But yeah, the Pelicans, they have a crucial flaw and they need to make a move now. <laughs> Rockets at 18, they really need to show some consistency. I have had them ranked higher, but they, they just haven't been consistent. They've got talent, I guess they can play basketball, but James Harden's got to go. Yeah, no, that's how it goes. Hornets at 19, Lamella Ball's balling out, and James Borrego, I might be blanking on his name. Let's call him Borrego, I know it's Borrego. He still needs to be fired. I, I really don't, I mean... He's been a decent defensive head coach, but he, he can't figure out rotations. He's, I can tell you right now, his rotations are not good. And regardless of how many wins and how many losses this team has, he, he hasn't been doing a good job with rotations. He hasn't been doing a good job with the offense, considering how many talented offensive pieces they have. And Devontae Graham really needs to st start hitting shots. And Miles Bridges needs some more minutes. Come on, that guy's really good. Why is he on the bench? Why is he barely playing? Knicks, Randall playing well, but I guess there's not really many other compositives, despite the fact they're five and five. I mean, I, I mean, Knicks are gonna make all sorts of arguments, Knicks fans, but it, there's not too much positive coming out of this. And RJ Barrett really needs to clean up his shooting. He's getting a lot of opportunities, averaging 38, 39 minutes per game. And if he starts hitting more shots, he's going to average 22, 23 points per game. So that's just the reality of the situation. And yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a plus six or seven points just out of nowhere. And it's not like you're taking shots away from someone else. If he just starts hitting his shots, this team does get improved quite a bit. Spurs at 21. I really like this team, but they just need to win a few more games. Pretty difficult schedule, three against the Lakers, three out of four against the Lakers. And in that fourth game, they had a four game stretch where they played three games against the Lakers and one against the Clippers. And I'm sure they're gonna start winning a few more games and they'll move back up. So yeah, that's just how I look at the Spurs team. Kings at 22, Marvin Bagley's been terrible. It might be time to move on from him. He, uh, I think he led the league in minus. He was the worst player on an NBA court for that week. Um, yeah, which is, yeah, yeah, yeah. He led the league in minus, like plus minus for that week. So Halliburton has been fantastic, but they're still not going to make the playoffs. And consequently, I have to rate them this low. Raptors at 23. They're just not consistent, and they're clearly in a rut right now. Even with Siakam playing better, 
I just don't see this team improving enough to start winning games. Something really needs to change, and soon. And I don't even know what it is. I can't figure it out. But some they need something. They need something, you know? Timberwolves at 24. With Cat back, this team should be trending upwards. But this defense, this defense can't guard anyone. I called it out. I said Ryan Saunders is a terrible defensive head coach, and you have no defensive pieces. And I, I know some people are trying to defend them, but yeah, I was spot on about that one. 28th in the league in defensive rating. They just can't play defense, and that's not that's not going to cut it in a, wet, a Western Conference that's extremely loaded. Thunder 25, team's doing well, but I don't know if they're consistent. Yeah, they just need to prove it with time. I couldn't tell you at this point. Bulls at 26, they won a few, but they've lost a lot more. They're learning, but it's like, where do you draw a line? You know, is Zach Levine gone? Is Wendell Carter gone? What are we doing with this team? I don't know, you know? How's the management going to treat the situation? I can't predict the future. But it feels like there's going to be a trade happening. Magic at 27, dropping 10 spots from 17. Markel Fultz being out is just ruining any momentum this team had. They need a new point guard now. Cole Anthony has been terrible. And it's time to look at Emmanuel Moutier. And it's time to look at... It's time to look at Isaiah Thomas, if you ask me. You know? <laughs> you need a point guard, and you need it now. Cole Anthony is not your starter if you're trying to be a playoff team. Let me tell you that right now. And I don't say Michael Carter-Williams. <laughs> Michael Carter-Williams is definitely not good enough to be their starter. Wizard 28. If Dia looks great when given the opportunity, can we can we please send him to the Suns for like two second round picks? Like now? I, I really want of Dia. Please give me of Diva of Dia. And spoiler, Davis Bertans is back. I think he hit like six, seven threes against the Suns tonight. So yeah, he, he's back. He's actually hitting threes now. Grizzlies. They still have another three weeks or more before John Morant, Jaron Jackson Jr., and Justice Winslow are back. So yeah, they have they have to be rated this low. I'm sorry, they just can't win. And Pistons, Hayes might be Hayes being out might be a good thing in terms of winning games. But you're not going to win games with Delon, right? Your starting point guard. Come on, <laughs> he's not a starting point guard in the NBA, and this team's not very good. Anyways, that's going to be it for this video. Thanks for watching. Maybe click like, maybe click subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.